The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Um, today I want to speak on the to, uh, on the topic. There are issues everywhere. There are issues everywhere. And I like I like this <laughs> this like. You see the issues everywhere. Was, this young girl. At around seven years. Now she came back from school and she was so angry. Shouting, people, people, people. 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 She's shouting, people, people. Angry with herself. Small girl at seven. She opened her door. And then she shut it behind her. Now the parents saw her shouting and then very disgusted with herself. Now they were surprised. She comes back from a school, she's not even greeting anybody. All that she was doing was shouting people, people, and she was angry. So the mother followed her, opened the door. She looked at the mother's face. You are also people. <laughs> Later on, they found out that she, when she goes to school, people have been disturbing her. And so she, this, this time around, when she was coming back, she, she was wearied with people. That's a people, people. So when the the mother opened the door, you are also part of the people. Oh, tiens, tiens, mon ina, tu le vois, on se sent au Costco, moi, maman, faut ha na du empanti. Et non, na menoa, oh, ben, oh, quand maman faut. Et tu ne m'as mis bien pour nous, on ne nous laisse pas. Oh, quand maman faut non. All of you are part of the people. Those of you listening to me, watching, and even the people sitting here, you're all part of the people. So wherever there are people, there will be issues. So even seven-year-old girl knows that wherever there are people, there are issues. So there are issues everywhere. Even in the church, there are issues everywhere. Troubles in the family, among siblings, issues at home, issues at the workplace, issues everywhere. However, the understanding that in life, things that cause offense are bound to happen in, in itself a safeguard to contracting a bitter spirit. So the essence of this teaching on bitterness is to help us keep a pure heart so that we will, we will be happy. We keep a pure heart so that we'll be happy in life. Because the, the Bible, Bible says, happy are those who have pure hearts. And the scripture says, they will see the Lord. So the essence of this teaching is to help us to be happy. And that we will see the Lord at his appearing. So that we will not contract that hardened heart that drifts away from the grace of God. 
It helps the fellow who is hungry and thirsting after righteousness to keep his heart from evil. Because God's eyes, scripture says, runs through and flow the earth, seeking for one person that whose heart is righteous before the Lord. This teaching is building the consciousness in us that God demands purity on the inside. So this teaching is to help us to be different. That we will shine as stars in this perverse world. For me, my prayer is that we will be different. A people of God we will be different a people of God I want you to just bow down your head if you can let us pray that we will be different a people amongst the people wherever people are there are issues but we should be the people amongst the people a people of God let us pray that this, these teachings will help Heal our hearts. Make us different. Help us to shine as stars in this perverse world. That it will build in us that consciousness that God is interested in what goes on in our heart. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Take my hand. And let it be consecrated Consecrated on you. My heart, Lord. My heart, Lord. that we move from religiosity to spirituality. That we will move from religiosity into spirituality. That we will move on from spirituality to character. Character that depicts that we are different. The express image of the Father. There are issues everywhere. I want to say that we don't have control over how people should 
art. No, we don't have control over how people behave. But you can determine your reaction to the actions. Certainly you can. We need some strength on the inside to be able to react correctly. Have a good attitude towards people's actions. So they will look at us, shake their hands, and say, that sister, that man is different. We have said that why should we allow someone's ugly behavior to destroy your beautiful heart. Have it in your spirit. That there are issues everywhere. Even in the church. First Timothy 3, 14 and 15. First Timothy 3, 14 and 15. Although I hope to come to you soon, I'm writing you these instructions so that if I'm delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Yes. Let me just repeat the reading. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing you these instructions so that if I'm delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Now, so Paul had to write to Timothy, his son. When he realized that he was not returning to him anytime soon. As to how people ought to behave. Conduct themselves in the household of God. Now, the people he was talking about was not they minus him, Timothy. No. Now, it included Timothy himself. He ought to know as a pastor as to how to conduct himself and the people have to know how they should conduct themselves because he is part of the household of God. So the church is described as a household of God. Now when we talk about the household, we are talking about the people in the house collectively. Yeah. A family including servants. See, the church always remains a mystery. The children plus servants. So in the normal church, when you enter, those you see there are not all children. So be careful who becomes your friend. In the church house, not all of them are children. Not all of them. So don't let me believe on that. But don't be afraid of the church. It's only that the people who go to church, not all of them are children of God. But why should he write to him as to how he should learn to conduct and other people should learn how to 
about how people should learn how to conduct themselves. Because there were issues to manage. Some challenges to mitigate. Including false teachings. False brothers. And as I throw false teachings, I throw church, false brothers. And we are no matter for now. As a pastor, it should be the solution to the issues, not be part of the problem. Now, so No, it shouldn't be part of the problem, but part of the solution. There are issues already, and some of that don't so as a pastor, Timothy should not. Add on to the issues. Now, Second Timothy two from fourteen. Yeah, Second Timothy from fourteen. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against the word there is what. Eh? So in the church, some people were querying about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. So that is church where people quarrel about words. Small report, your commander say, Ye nom na kai wong, not di wong, a dance yon yanko po enim, na wachi on no kwa, and I say, when chap on no kwa, en yem mashi, nem mum a dani a tear for no asso. Do your best to present yourself to God as, a, as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Now, their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Herminius and Philetus. Now, one Samba Yere said Yarboni, now, one Mubi and Hymenu and Phileto, who have departed from the truth. They are also inside the church. When you know, was a funum, ah, what pie a friend no crano. They say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroyed the faith of some. So you now understand why Paul is telling Timothy, do your best to study, to know the scriptures. Because amongst the people in the church, some are teaching false doctrine. And so you as a pastor, you must set the record straight, teach well, so that these people will not disturb the members with false doctrine so what would you enter as marvel paul everyone timothy will say oh my mother in in science i'm not no one church in here it's answer as a funny money penny be adding to a chair one neighbor what danny a binum did you able to in fact this teaching of resurrection has uh, happened already undermines one of christianity's fundamental belief i don't know i'm saying church there a sorry tia winya near you know these and other issues in the church, Paul is encouraging Timothy or urging him to address. See, but all these evil teachings and evil men notwithstanding, he made some statements in the three verses following Na, what we have just read. Verse 19. Second Timothy 2 from 19. Nevertheless, despite all that goes on in the church the teachings evil teachings and people disturbing here and there says nevertheless god's solid foundation stands firm sealed with this inscription the lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the lord 
must turn away from wickedness. Yes. Mm. In a great house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purpose and some for common use. If you can see a more any sika any greater no man co na in ya any dot yeah be and so a womubi na wubi na e bin so ye de womu. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful for the master, and prepared to do any good work. Nase ubi atin wo every ye no mwa. Obey a dear wobuo na what you want. Oh, we no the bay a ye na a ye na ye ye na we see a de re ye a juma. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. And so, you know, you know, so I'm hoping to so in English, the word foundation is used in a double sense. And the year can't for Pema, you bet much remove a We use it to mean the basis. Or groundwork of anything. You bet to me, I can say, Fapem, eh, I dear be a year sino, year took me a year sino, a babbage. It could be moral foundation. You bet to me, I ye and treacher and I say, a bravo. It could also be natural or prepared ground that structures rest on. You bet to me, I ye fapem, I ya toa, you bet to me, a seat no ma edia siso. So we are, when we talk about foundation, we mean. Groundwork. Or the basis for anything. But number two. When we talk about foundation, we mean the act of founding. That is setting up. But the second definition applies more to what we just read. So what the scripture is trying to say here is this. That God's solid foundation here means the church or the association that Jesus founded. So God has founded a church. It has a, it is solid. Then Paul went on to say this. That it has a seal. When we talk about seal, we, we seal a product to prove the genuineness of it. Or ownership. Now, when you buy any product and the seal is broken, you become suspicious of the genuineness of it. So the seal also denotes what we call the trademark or what brand it is. So when we talk about architecture, and finally, and the big one so far at this passage is concerned. The seal indicates the purpose for which a structure has been built. So what Paul was trying to tell Timothy is this. The church God founded has an inscription or seal. Which shows at once who designed it and for what purpose it was be it has been designed. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Seed with this inscription. So the inscription or the seal 
is going to describe the purpose and who designed it so let me read this what is sealed on the foundation the lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the lord must turn away from wickedness so this was founded by the lord the Lord knows those who are here. Then the purpose is that everyone who names the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. Two principles emerge from this test about, about the church. Number one, it tells us that the church consists of people who belong to God. God possesses them. They no longer possess themselves. And they are not possessed by the world. Because they still say that the Lord knows those who are his. When we are talking about the church, we are talking about people who are gods. Then number two. The church consists of those who have turned away from wickedness towards God. Because the seal is saying that the Lord knows those who are his. That is the first part. And Everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. There are people who have turned away from wickedness. First Thessalonians chapter one verse nineteen. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Now we'll take the scripture again, but let me give you this background. The Greeks and the people living in Thessalonica, they are giving a testimony about the church in Thessalonica. Okay. And that is the testimony Paul has written here. That is the testimony we just read. I want to read the testimony again. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave them. So they, are, they went to Paul and they spoke about the reception the church in Thessalonica gave, gave them. And then pay attention to this. If we can read. So, so let's, start, let's start from four. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Now, so the people are saying that these people have turned from what? To serve the living God. And to wait for his son from heaven. So they are saying that this church is waiting for the son of God from heaven. Whom he rescued from the dead. Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. 
So three things about a good Christian and a good church. Number one, they have repented from their idolatrous past. Number two, have committed themselves to serve God. Number three, and are waiting for Jesus' second coming. This is the mark of a true born again fellow. They have repented from the adulterous past. They have turned to God and committed to serving Him. And they do the service with the expectation that Jesus will come again. These are the key traits of genuine Christian conversion. But that is not to say that the church consists of perfect people. If they were, there would not be church. Someone once said, I'm glad that the church does not consist of perfect people. If it did, I will not have been part of it. And I want to be part of it. Unquote. I'm glad the church doesn't consist of perfect people. If it did, I would not have been part of it. And I want to be part of the church. So I'm glad that the church is not part, is not full of perfect people. But the hope is that the church consists of people facing the right direction. They have turned from wickedness and have turned towards God. So we may not be perfect people, but people should see that we have turned away from wickedness and our faith is towards God. That is the church. And there are issues. And some will we'll continue to talk about the issues of the church, some issues of the church. In maybe one or two weeks ahead of us, we will be discussing issues in the church. But I want to say that there are issues everywhere. Because the issues stem from people. And wherever there are people, there are issues. So when you marry and you marry a human being and the, if the person is part of the people, there will be issues. It's all worried. Now, and even in the church there are issues character issues and many other issues that Timothy had to deal with but the foundation is still solid the church is the Lord's we are God's people and everyone who wants to be part of this church must depart from iniquity. That is the seal. Depicting the purpose. And we have said that. Even though the church is not made up of perfect people. There are people facing the right direction. They have turned from the adulterous past. And they are facing God. Now, if you keep going towards God, that is where the transformation comes. As you get closer and closer to the light, it reveals 
the, the, the darkness on your inside helps you to repent and to change. So what we are talking about the church, we are talking about a people who move from one glory to another. So we were we, we were sinners saved by grace we are imperfect people but we don't remain imperfect and imperfect because we ought to be holy facing the right direction how many of us will want to face the right direction how many of us want to be different may the lord bless us shall we rise